Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Edexcel IGCAC 91 Chemistry Paper 1C November 2021 question number 8 to question number 11. This is a part 3 video. If you haven't watched the part 1 and part 2, uh, the link will be in the description. You can watch it. Question number 8. This question is about barium chloride. Barium chloride can be made by reacting barium carbonate with dilute hydrochloric acid. The chemical equation for the reaction is barium carbonate solid reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce barium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. Describe a method to produce dry crystals of hydrated barium chloride starting with barium carbonate powder and dilute hydrochloric acid. So in a question like this, all right, we will talk about that we will add barium carbonate all right, with the hydrochloric acid, one spatula at a time, until the barium carbonate, barium carbonate is in excess. The reason why we're adding the barium carbonate one spatula at a time, because the moment the barium carbonate is going to touch the hydrochloric acid, it's going to react to produce carbon dioxide gas, which will cause uh, that particular solution to freeze up. All right, effervescence is going to occur. So if we add way too much all of a sudden, then that's going to cause it to uh, basically spill. Then after the barium carbonate is in excess, which will ensure that the barium, all the hydrochloric acid is reacted and we have formed the barium chloride to its maximum. All right. And the excess barium carbonate, we can just simply filter it off. And then after filtering off, we're going to collect the filtrate. All right. The filtrate, we're going to heat that particular filtrate to evaporate some of the water. So that, we, I mean, we're going to heat it so that, you know, it's evaporated so that uh, it reaches its crystallization point at that particular temperature. And then what we're going to do is we're going to leave the solution, leave that particular concentrated solution to cool so that it crystallizes. Once the crystals form, we will filter the crystals from the solution. And then we will leave those crystals in that particular filter paper in a warm, dry place so that the crystals dry and we are going to obtain pure crystals of barium chloride. Part B, a colorless solution contains sodium carbonate and sodium sulfate. Describe a test using barium chloride to show that the colorless solution contains sulfate ions. So to test for sulfate ions, all right, we must uh, add barium chloride. And before adding barium chloride, we must also add a dilute nitric acid. So dilute nitric acid. Question number nine, a student investigates the reaction between solid hydrated sodium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid. She uses the method to investigate the temperature change during the reaction. Step one, pour 25 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid into a polystyrene cup 
Step 2. Record the temperature of the dilute hydrochloric acid. Step 3. Add 0.5 gram of sodium carbonate and start the mixture. Step 4. Record the lowest temperature of the mixture. Step 5. Add further 0.5 gram portions of sodium carbonate and one portion at a time. Start the mixture and record the lowest temperature each time. The table shows the student's result. Mass of sodium carbonate, 0. Temperature in degrees Celsius, 17. And as the mass of sodium carbonate added increases, we can see that the temperature also decreases. All right. Now plot the student's result in the grid. Draw a curve of best fit, ignoring the anomalous result. So at 0 0.0, 17. 0.5, 15.6. Part 3. Explain why it is better to use polystyrene cup instead of a glass beaker in this experiment. Polystyrene cup is an insulator and this reduces the thermal heat energy coming in from the surrounding. Temperature decreases will be closer to the original value. Part four, suggest a reason for the anomalous result. So the anomalous result can occur, uh, right here we can see that the anomalous result has occurred uh, at a much higher temperature compared to the one that was supposed to be. So it might happen that the student has taken the, rec uh, you know, recorded the result earlier or the student has forgot to start the mixture. Part 5. State how the results show that all the dilute hydrochloric acid has reacted. We can understand all the hydrochloric acid has reacted because the last two results are the same value. Question number 9a, part 4. Use the result of the experiment to explain the type of reaction that occurs when sodium carbonate is added to dilute hydrochloric acid. So basically when sodium carbonate is added to dilute hydrochloric acid, we can see there is a general decrease in temperature. There is a general decrease in temperature. Decrease in temperature occurs in endothermic reaction. So obviously this reaction is an endothermic reaction. And the second thing that we can say that it takes in heat from the surrounding because it is an endothermic reaction and as shown by the temperature decrease of the reaction mixture. Nine B one, the student does another experiment using the same reaction. The diagram shows the student's apparatus. We can see cotton wool, we can see dilute hydrochloric acid, sodium carbonate, balance, and the mass on the balance decreases as the carbon dioxide gas escapes. Give a reason for the cotton wool plug in the conical flask. Usually, this kind of reaction, in this kind of reaction where there is carbonate and acid is involved, it involves a lot of effervescence and bubbles. When the bubbles, basically, when they burst, they splash. So to prevent this particular solution from splashing out, Part two, the student adds 2.12 gram of sodium carbonate to an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid. The chemical equation for the reaction is sodium carbonate reaction with a dilute hydrochloric acid produces sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. 
calculate the minimum mass in gram of carbon dioxide formed in this reaction. So the MR of sodium carbonate So basically, when we are asked to calculate the maximum mass in gram of carbon dioxide formed in this reaction, first of all, we're going to say that MR of the sodium carbonate, we need that because we have been given 2.12 gram of sodium carbonate. So we need to know the number of moles. We calculate the MR as follows, and then we find out the number of moles by mass divided by uh, MR, relative molecular mass. Then we get 0 0.02 mole. Then we find out the number of moles of CO2, 0 0.02, because one mole of sodium carbonate is the same ratio with one mole of carbon dioxide. So they have similar molar ratio, meaning that they will have similar number of moles. So M mass of carbon dioxide, then we find out, which is equals to 0 0.02 into 44 to 0 0.88 gram. So thereby the mass is 0 0.88 gram. Part three, suggest why the mass of carbon dioxide produced is less than calculated maximum mass. So the reason why it will be less than calculate, uh, um, you know, calculated mass, it's because maybe the sodium hydrogen carbonate that is used, maybe the sodium carbonate that is used in this experiment, it's not pure, all right? Maybe some of the carbon dioxide that is produced in this reaction does not escape as a gas, rather it dissolves into the solution, into the water. Question number 10, a teacher uses this apparatus to separate a mixture of ethanol and water. So we can see A, the liquid, which is being heated, and then B, which is the condenser. Name this method of separation. This method of separation where we use boiling point difference between two liquids, all right? Ethanol has a, a boiling point of 78 C, and water has a boiling point of 100 C. Uh, we call it fractional distillation. Name the change of state taking place at A. So at A, materials will evaporate, they will boil off. So evaporation will take place. Name the changes of state taking place at B. So at B, condensation is going to take place because we can see liquid is forming from the uh, gaseous, from the, uh, from the gas that is arising from here. Liquid is forming. Name the change of state taking place at B. So condensation. Part B, the mixture contains 15.5 cm cube of ethanol. One cm cube of ethanol has a mass of 0 0.79 gram. One mole of ethanol contains 6.00 into the power of 23 molecules. MR of ethanol is 46. Calculate the amount in moles of ethanol in 15.5 cm cube of ethanol. So the mass of ethanol, mass of ethanol, 15.5 will be multiplied by 0 0.79 gram. 0 0.79 gram per cm cube. Once multiplied, the answer is 12.245 gram. Then we will find out the number of moles of ethanol. So 12.245 will be then divided by 46 gram per mole. And the answer comes 0 0.266 moles. So the answer will be 0 0.266 moles. Next, calculate the number of molecules of ethanol in 15.5 cm cube of ethanol. So now since we know the number of moles, we can find out the number of molecules as well. So number of molecules of ethanol will be multiplied by 0 0.266 with 6.02, 6.00 into 10 to the power of 23, which is equals to 1.60 into 10 to the power of 23. Part C, after five minutes, the teacher collects sample of colorless liquid in a new beaker. Describe a chemical test to show that the colorless liquid contains water. So in order to show that something contains water, we must do a test for water. So we can add, we can add that particular colorless liquid to anhydrous copper to sulfate, 
and you know presence of water will make anhydrous copper to sulfate turn blue Part two, describe a physical test to show if the colorless liquid is pure water. In order to show a colorless liquid uh, to be pure water, we can measure its boiling point. We know that pure water boils at 100 degrees C. Part D, the teacher uses this apparatus to heat 100 grams of water. We can see a copper can, we can see 100 grams of water, we can see a thermometer, burner with ethanol inside it. He records the temperature of the water before and after heating. The temperature of the water before heating is 21C, the temperature of water after heating is 70.5C. Calculate the heat energy change Q in joules. Specific heat capacity of water is given 4.2 joule per gram per degree Celsius. So first of all, what we need to find out is we need to find out the delta, the temperature change. So 70.5 minus 21.0, which gives us 49.5 degree C. Now we're going to use the formula Q is equals to MC delta. So mass, the mass of the water since it is 1 gram per cm cube. So the mass will be 100 gram. And then C, specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 into del T, which is the temperature, uh, 49.5. So 20790 joules. Part two, the student burns 0 0.02 mole of ethanol. Use this information and your value for Q to calculate the molar enthalpy del H in kilojoule per mole for the combustion of ethanol. Include a sign in your answer. For 0 0.02 moles, So after division, the answer comes. Because the energy is released, we have to give it negative. So after uh, uh, you know the calculation, the answer comes minus 1039, 39.5 kilojoule per mole energy released. The reason why we gave the negative sign is because this is an exothermic reaction. Question number 11. This question is about the reactivity of metals. Table 1 shows whether a reaction occurs between a metal and then aqueous solution of a metal sulfate. So the metal is manganese. Metal sulfate is chromium sulfate. And does a reaction occur? Yes. So we can say manganese is more reactive than chromium. So manganese, and then we can write down chromium. Now with tin and cadmium sulfate, we can see there is no reaction. That means cadmium is more reactive than tin. Cadmium is more reactive than tin. When we react chromium with cadmium sulfate, there is a reaction. That means chromium is more reactive than cadmium. Name the type of reaction that occurs between manganese and chromium sulfate. So basically, manganese is more reactive in the reactivity series and it can displace chromium. So this is an example of a displacement reaction. Part 2. Use the information in Table 1 to complete the order of reactivity. Most reactive, least reactive. Starting with manganese. Now we can say manganese is the most reactive. After that, in order of reactivity, we can put chromium. Then we can put cadmium. Then we can put tin. Part B. The table 2 shows the color of four metals and the color of four metal sulfate solutions. Copper. Color of metal, brown. Color of metal sulfate solution, blue. Iron. Dark gray color metal. And then color of metal sulfate, green. Magnesium, silvery, all right, color of metal sulfate, colorless. Zinc, light gray, color of metal sulfate, colorless. When a metal is added to a metal sulfate solution, they may be a, there may be a color change on the surface of the metal and in the solution. Use the information in table two and your knowledge to the reactivity series to explain why any color change in this, in this two experiment. Copper added to magnesium sulfate. So 
since copper adding to magnesium sulfate, copper is lower in the reactivity series compared to magnesium. So there will be no color change. Copper is less reactive than magnesium. Next, when zinc is added to iron sulfate. When zinc is added to iron sulfate, zinc is more reactive than iron. So zinc turns from light gray to dark gray. And the solution will turn from green to colorless because zinc is more reactive than iron. Part C, a different experiment can be used to place metals in an order of reactivity. This is the method. Step one, add one gram of metal to 225 cm sulfuric acid. Step two, measure the volume of gas produced in one minute. Give two variables that should be controlled in this experiment. So we can see in this particular experiment, we already have to add one gram of metal to 225 cm sulfuric acid and measure the volume of gas produced in one minute. Obviously, this kind of reaction will be affected by changes in temperature. And this kind of uh, reaction will be affected by changes in dilute sulfuric acid or the surface area of the metal that is being used. So all of these factors must be taken into consideration. Number one, concentration of dilute sulfuric acid. In number two, we can say temperature definitely temperature and in number three we can say surface area of the metal this is a bonus point so just gonna add it part two a small piece of calcium is added to some dilute sulfuric acid in a beaker one of the product of the reaction calcium sulfate is insoluble in water suggest why the reaction stops after a short time even though the beaker still contains calcium and dilute sulfuric acid now we know that calcium sulfate layer, which forms from the reaction between calcium and sulfuric acid, it is insoluble. So the calcium sulfate forms a layer around the calcium metal, which is insoluble. Guys, nice. moving on, part D. One gram of aluminum is added to 0 0.06 mole of dilute sulfuric acid. The equation for the reaction is shown. Aluminum plus sulfuric acid producing aluminum sulfate and water and hydrogen. Show by calculation that the sulfuric acid is in excess. So in order to show that sulfuric acid is in excess, first of all, we need to know the number of moles of aluminum that is present. So moles of aluminum. So we know that two moles of aluminum requires three moles of sulfuric acid. So number of moles of sulfuric acid required. So we can definitely say 0 0.060 moles of sulfuric acid that we have is greater than 0 0.0556. That means sulfuric acid is in excess. Guys, thank you for joining the video. That's all for today's video. All right, and if you like videos like this, then please subscribe to the channel. All right, help the channel grow. And if you want, uh, uh, you know, uh, videos like this that you want for your biology and chemistry question paper, you can post it in our comments and then basically we'll solve it for you. Thank you very much for joining. Bye-bye.